people say in a one-on-one -on -one fight, always bet on Kaido. Land, sea, and air. Out of everything in this world, this pirate is said to be the strongest creature alive. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today we're going to be examining an incredibly major figure of the series, an emperor of the sea, and quite possibly one of the most powerful beings within the world as we know it, Kaido. Kaido is an incredibly large and overbearing horned individual who commands a profound sense of intense terror simply by being in his presence. Most of this is due to his physicality, but a lot of it can also be attributed to his exceptionally volatile nature and his constant focus on throwing the world into the largest war that it has ever seen. With that said, Kaido certainly is not without his quirky side, which generally appears when he is intoxicated, which you know seems to be quite often actually. But in this state, Kaido can be any form of drunk you can imagine, whether it be a smiley, happy drunk, the sad, depressed drunk, or even the incredibly aggressive starter fight trunk. It's hard to know what you're going to get with Kaido. And just before we go any further, I will address the absurd amount of comments that I'm sure to get in response to this video, which will be something along the lines of LOL GLR, you should have waited a bit longer to make this video. And I recognize that Kaido is of course absurdly relevant in current events in regards to both the manga and the anime. And as a result, this video will undoubtedly be outdated fairly soon. However, at the same time, there has never been a good time to cover Kaido. And I don't think there will be for at least another year, possibly even two. So as a result, here we are. Just a nice Kaido video for those newer fans of One Piece, or even non-fans who are just curious about a big old horn dude. Whatever your taste, let's continue. Kaido was first introduced into the series by name and epic silhouette that totally turned out to be exactly what he looks like, way, way, way back in the Return to Water 7 arc, when Monkey D. Gart paid a visit to his grandson Luffy and informed him of the existence of the four emperors of the sea. So he got off to a pretty strong start in the series, instantly being named one of the four strongest pirates in modern existence, alongside figures such as Whitebeard, Shanks, and the then equally as mysterious Big Mom. However, Kaido's formal debut in the series would not occur until chapter 795, which is, you know, over 350 chapters since he was initially mentioned, which was about nine years of real time. So he was a pretty anticipated character, and might I say, his introduction did not disappoint in the slightest. Kaido's debut occurred in a chapter entitled Suicide, in which a large figure was seen leaping off a sky island and falling 10,000 meters onto hard ground. However, rather than being dead, like most people should be in this situation, the figure we now know as Kaido emerged with nothing more than a mere headache. And that brings us to a very important aspect of Kaido, which is that from what we've seen at the time of this recording, his durability is so extreme that he is nigh on invincible and has earned a reputation of being unkillable. In fact, it has been said that during his career on this planet, Kaido has been caught and tortured 18 times, as well as attempted to be executed by the Marines as well as other emperors a total of 40 times, only for each and every single attempt to fail, primarily because every weapon brandished upon him broke in the act of attempted execution. In regards to his history, Kaido at the time of this recording remains a bit of a question mark. However, we are well aware that he was a member of the Rocks Pirates, a legendary group of equally as profound figures whose time on the sea was brought to a halt officially by Monkey D. Garp at least 38 years ago. After this, Kaido, as with many former Rocks members, went on to form his own pirate crew known as the Beast Pirates, although in the Viz Manga translation, they are dubbed as the Animal Kingdom Pirates. I'm going to continue with Beast Pirates though because it's less of a mouthful. Rather than be hailed as the captain of this group, Kaido goes by the title of Supreme Commander or Governor General, depending on which translation you use, and his crew were exceptionally active during the Golden Age of Piracy that was thrust into existence after the death of Pirate King Goldie Roger. Although at this time, Kaido was not necessarily the pure powerhouse that he was today, and he did need to work his way up the ranks, at one stage even being a key rival to a familiar figure we know as Gekko Moria, a rivalry that would come to climax when they clashed for a final time in the new world, with Moria being convincingly defeated and losing his entire crew in the process. Speaking of crews though, Kaido for a very aggressive and fickle being does seem to genuinely care about his crew, particularly the All-Stars, who are his three most trusted officers being King, Queen, and Jack. Although this concern may spread much further down the ranks as Scotch, a guardian of one of Kaido's favorite islands, blatantly stated that Kaido would not be pleased if he personally were attacked. Not that that stopped Drake from attacking Scotch anyway, but that is another story. The purpose of the Beast Pirates, however, seems to be essentially to serve Kaido's ambition, which is to cause the largest war this world has ever seen. And in aid of this desire, Kaido and the Beast Pirates have been working diligently for the last 20 years, with one of their primary actions being the acquisition of Wano, the isolated land of the samurai. After invading the island, Kaido and his forces were able to overthrow the Kozuki family, as well as defeat the legendary warrior Kozuki Odin. Although not without consequence, as fun fact, the one and only scar on Kaido's chest was inflicted 
by Odin. Despite this, Odin was eventually executed, and Kaido joined forces with the current Shogun of Wano, Kurozumi Orochi, using him as something of a puppet to control the day-to-day -day running of the island. However, Kaido's acquisition of Wano was a strategic decision as he proceeded to plunder their natural resources, to craft a large array of factories in order to mass produce weapons for his eventual world war. But of course, Kaido's efforts were not condensed to Wano alone, and he continued to expand his crew as well as his weapons effort, harboring a desire to build a crew consisting entirely of Devil Fruit users. And so in aid of this particular endeavor, he began a business partnership with now former Warlord of the Sea, Don Quixote Del Flamingo, who agreed to produce artificial Devil Fruits for the Beast Pirates known as Smile. Although it should really be said that these fruits were very defective products, with only a 10% success rate of gaining a power post-consumption. Despite those odds, Kaido has thus far amassed a force of at least 500 artificial Devil Fruit users within the Beast Pirates, the majority of which comprise factions known as the Gifters, although several higher ranking members within his crew are also Smile users. But back to Kaido himself, we've spoken at great length about the godlike durability of this man, and actually it might be a good time to point out that man isn't exactly the correct technical term to describe Kaido. Because you see, as he has grown in power to the point of becoming an Emperor of the Sea, Kaido has also become known as the strongest creature in the world. And this is a very important semantic distinction, because it goes to great lengths to refer to Kaido as something other than human. And this is actually a common motif when referring to Kaido, as he has even been called a thing by his former crewmate and fellow Emperor of the Sea, Charlo Lin Lin. And whilst this aspect of Kaido is a mystery at the time of this recording, and I'm sure will be answered soon, I can't give you anything but pure speculation as to why he is referred to in this way. But you know what I can give you? Cold hard facts. And those cold hard facts are Kaido's sheer power. Because whilst in the past, many combatants seem to have been capable of defeating him, Kaido has bloomed into quite possibly one of the most incredibly dominant beings currently alive today. With not only natural strength, but he has also demonstrated a mastery of Haki, having invoked armament in order to coat his club and defeat a gear fourth Luffy with a single strike. To add to this, it can be assumed that he is also a user of Observation Haki, simply because every top tier combatant these days seems to need to be, but it has also been hinted that Kaido is a wielder of Conqueror's Haki, although once again at the time of this recording, it is not confirmed per se. But moving into quite possibly Kaido's most devastating power, it would appear that he is a user of a mythical devil fruit that allows him to transform into a most ludicrously Shenron scale large eastern dragon and casually create castle destroying attacks with simple use of breath, not OP at all. Although just to add another disclaimer to this, at the time of this recording, it has not been confirmed that this is Kaido's Devil Fruit. If anything, it's also entirely possible that it's the other way around, and Kaido's dragon form is his natural form, and his more humanoid incarnation is the result of a Devil Fruit. But with all of this in mind, Kaido thinks pretty highly of himself, as he should, I suppose, because at this point in his life, there are very few things out there that could so much as touch him. And the crew that he has built is certainly one of the most formidable that the world has ever seen. And at this point, I'm going to throw in this spoiler warning, so if you're not up to date with the manga and you don't want some pretty range spoilers, then please do skip to this time in the video. However, if you are up to date or just simply don't care, well, then let us proceed. One such being that could rival Kaido has managed to appear on Wano recently, and that is of course Big Mom. And immediately after encountering each other, the two started a conflict that resulted in the same sky-splitting phenomenon that we saw when Shanks and Whitebeard clashed briefly in the Return to Water 7 arc. However, after fighting throughout the night on Kaido's island of Onigashima, eventually the two of them came to an agreement, choosing to form quite possibly the most dangerous pirate alliance in the history of the world. With Charlotte Lin Lin, who holds a bounty of 4 billion 388 million berries, officially aligning herself with Kaido, a creature worth 4,611,100,000 berries. Some more fun facts about Kaido. Throughout his long career as a pirate, Kaido has managed to become the proud owner of a road poneglyph, one of the four rare items that with their combined information will allow a person to pinpoint the location of the legendary island Raftel. There are some slight inconsistencies in regards to the romanization of Kaido's name, as in One Piece Green, Secret Pieces, it was spelt as K-A-I-D-O, whilst a more recent manga chapter shows his name being spelt with a U on the end as well, like Kaido. It should also be said that during all of this time, Kaido hasn't simply been building up to his war patiently, and he has on occasion attempted to bring world-shaping conflicts, with the prime example of this being his attempt to intercept Whitebeard's forces on their way to Marineford to fight in the Paramount War. However, the Beast Pirates themselves were intercepted by Redhead Shanks, and while the details of that potential conflict are unknown, we do know that both parties came out of it at least relatively unscathed. And finally, a truly useless fact, the anime episode featuring Kaido's debut was first aired on May 1st, which also just so happens to be Kaido's birthday. 
But that pretty much does it for Kaido, for this brief moment in time anyway. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigan rate takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101. What's your favorite One Piece ending theme? Oh wow, it's been such a long time since One Piece has actually had an ending theme. I actually don't remember the series having one since I was in like high school. And that was, ooh, that was a long time ago. The very first one, which I think was called Memories. And it's ironic that I can't quite remember that, but it was absolutely brilliant. And I also have a soft spot for Glory, which was the one that just focused on the Straw Hats leaving Princess Vivi in the desert at night. That one was beautiful. And Free Will was also really good. In fact, most of the endings were wonderful. And I really need to listen to them all again properly though. But man, I really wish we still had endings instead of like super long openings. Do you only do YouTube videos or do you have a daytime job as well? Ah, so increasingly I am spending more and more of my time just doing YouTube stuff, especially because I'm really trying to push the second channel now, but I do still work mostly in the field of theatre design. I definitely don't do as much as I used to, which was essentially working full time in commercial musical theatre, but I am still very much around. Do you love me, senpai? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Of course I do.